I had a 3.3 Gleason, which was good. I knew that uh, because I had one of the people I talked to was a doctor friend of mine in San Diego who had had prostate cancer 10 years before. And he went through the process of explaining to me what a 3.3 Gleason was, what a 3.4 or 4.3 Gleason were, so I knew I had a 3.3. But I was not familiar at all with prostate cancer, and as a result, uh, I immediately dived into uh, a lot of internet information and books and read extensively about prostate cancer once I got the diagnosis. The first urologist went through the process of explaining, you've got cancer and you need to get it out of your system this is dangerous. And that was really the way it was presented to me. Every person I talked to was more concerned about, we got to get the cancer out of your body. That's what we got to do is we got to get rid of that cancer. And so nobody was talking about active surveillance, but as time progressed, I realized active surveillance was an option that nobody was talking about. It was like that was just not considered. So the urologists were pushing for intervention some type of surgical procedure and I'm thinking to myself maybe I'm crazy because I'm not as concerned about getting the cancer out as I am having a full and productive life and a surgical intervention may create a situation where I'm not able to do the stuff I want to do. I continued to do research, continued to look into it and then I ran across Patrick Hall who's a friend of mine and Patrick said well genomic health is now doing a cancer test on prostate cancer and why don't you consider having your uh, biopsy results sent out to genomics and let them run the test. And the oncologist I have to talk to is extremely well versed in a lot of things relating to cancer, not just prostate cancer. And he was very, very careful to spend time explaining, if anything, over explaining how cancer cells work, how cancer cells and prostates work versus cancer cells and breast. And by the end of the day, he was able to convince me, not convince me, he was able to explain to me that prostate cancers typically are slow growing, slow moving, and they are not nearly as active as cancer cells in other parts of the body. And I said, well, you know, I've got this friend who's recommended Genomics Health, and he says, yeah. He said, I think that's a great idea. He told me, or he told us, my wife and I, that in his experience, genomics testing of breast cancer had had a tremendous impact on the reduction of radical mastectomies and had created more and more lumpectomies because they were able to, the doctors, the oncologists were able to determine, for example, that in the breast cancer cells, sometimes the breast cancer cells were not as active and a lumpectomy would be just as beneficial as a radical mastectomy. So, we then get the test score back, which I brought with me, a copy of it, and I ended up in a GPS of 15, which according to the Oncotype DX test is very low, and the probabilities are very high that you're not going to have an aggressive form of cancer in the prostate region. So we're sitting in his office, and he's looking at it, and I said, well, I don't know. I mean, uh, what do you think? And he said, well, if it was me, I wouldn't do anything. I'd do the active surveillance. Since I have taken on active surveillance, I did change diet, I did change exercise, I'm much more routine in being careful about what I eat. I'm, I'm not vegan, but I've taken a lot of meat out of my diet, take sugars out of my diet, not completely, but a lot, and I exercise daily. I mean, it's been almost exactly two years right now that I was diagnosed, so I'll go back for a two-year biopsy, and hopefully I've you know, made the right choice, and we'll just keep plugging along. My PSA scores are now in the fours and fives. I go back for a PSA every 90 days, and my PSAs have run anywhere from 4.2 to 5.5.